kick. Did you get that? In our modern media landscape, visual images constantly grab our attention. We process what we see instantly. Listening, on the other hand, is an acquired skill where we often get better over time. For quality audio recordings, there are professionals who, in an intricate way, understand how we listen. They are a combination of artist and technician, masters of gathering, creating, and blending sound. Vermont has a robust audio production scene where technicians bring years of experience. Walter Westinghouse teaches at Champlain College in Burlington and has been an engineer for 10 years. Kind of take advantage or take charge of this. I got to mix Public Enemy at Higher Ground. It was uh, probably in the first couple years that I worked there. I got to shake Chuck D's hand. I uh, got to meet Waka Flocka Flame, got to shake his hand. In fact, many of the engineers we met are products of the music world, including some at Vermont Public Radio. I worked as a, a, a assistant audio engineer in Quad Studios in Times Square for, for many years. This place was a gangster rap house, so I spent a lot of time there uh, working on gangster rap, which wasn't necessarily my favorite kind of music, but uh, it was an interesting place to work. Uh, I, I had the opportunity to work with Biggie Smalls uh, for several months. No matter what the project, whether it's music, a voice recording, or a news story, it has to be recorded in the right room. We take the sound of our studios and our performance areas really critically. In this room, for instance, there are no parallel walls. It is, you know, built on a suspended floor so the floor doesn't vibrate from ground effects, trucks going by and things like that. Um, and all of our rooms are pretty much designed like that. We have the F-16s flying over every day and you can't even hear them from inside this space. Outside noise is one thing to consider, but all studios are built with different intentions, depending on what type of audio is recorded there. All the way down to the ground, there is absolutely no touching. There's like foam and insulation between each room, so they're all decoupled. Ceiling is pitched, you know, it's got that like farmhouse barn kind of look to it, but all of the panels are dropped down and they're held by these springs that like, I think one company in Utah makes, it's like, really specialized. Guilford Sound, near Brattleboro, is bigger than Meadowlark and looks more like other major studios you would find across the country. The whole front wall is built around those soffit speakers and they translate really well, or at least I'm used to them. I like them, you know, I like the way they sound. They're not exhausting, they're really easy to listen to. Egan Media in Colchester specializes in audio post-production for television and again, the room is the key. So this is my uh, fourth and final studio. There's so much math in this room. There's tuned Helmholtz resonating cabinets in each corner. I think there's 36 of them. There's tuned membrane traps using mass-loaded vinyl and, and in a sealed enclosure. There's, I don't know how many cubic feet of Owens Corning 703 and 705. In other words, studio architecture can be complex but the main purpose is to make something that's practical and looks good. They said that this type of material will be really great because um, within the room to have different types of material for the sound to bounce off or absorb um, helps kind of create a really nice live room sound. So you have the stone, you have wood, you have, if you look up at the top, you've got um, um, fabric panels hanging and on the wall. So having as many different types of materials for the sound to use uh, actually benefits the recording. Um, and it's just pretty. A room needs the right equipment, from headphones so the artist can hear themselves, to huge guitar amplifiers. Engineers choose specific items for each performance. At first glance, recording studios look like they belong in science fiction movies with all the knobs, dials, and meters, but some of the basics have never changed. And historically, one of the most important tools used in recording is the microphone. As I speak, the sound waves produced by my voice are transmitted through the air to the microphone, where these sound waves are converted to changes in an electric current. Microphones are not all the same. Different mics hear in different ways. Drums, guitar, 
and vocals all require specific types of mics and the particular placement to capture their distinct sounds. Here's an example of how big of a difference studio quality microphones make. Hi, I'm Brian Tone, professional voiceover actor, and I'm recording through an iPhone 6. Hi, I'm Brian Tone, professional voiceover actor, and I'm speaking to you through a GrooveTubes GT50 wide diaphragm condenser microphone. Once every audio element has been recorded well, the engineer then mixes those separate ingredients into a final product. To do that, they use equalization, or EQ, a way of tweaking the frequencies of every recording. EQ is the best way I can describe it to people and since I teach like 100 level classes is think about like your your car EQ. We've all EQ'd our tuner in our car, highs, mids, and lows. And you're trying to make the best balance between the highs, the mids, the lows. For me, like when you start talking about EQ and frequency, I, I st think about mixing. And I think about trying to EQ all the different instruments so that they fit with each other and they're not competing for space within a mix. It's a matter of, you know, you're, you're cutting those frequencies on some other instruments perhaps to let that guitar shine through. Um, you're making space, you're crafting the acoustic landscape and, and kind of carving out space for different instruments so that it all blends together. Listen to how manipulating EQ can have an effect on the sound of a simple voice track. At this point, we're going to isolate all of the low frequencies. And then here, we're going to isolate all of the high frequencies. EQ is just one of the many tools engineers have to achieve the artist's vision. After mixing comes mastering a final pass to prepare for CDs and digital recordings. It's a way to second check my work. So whenever you're mixing something, it's never done. At a certain point at, in the mix process, you get to the point where you can't listen to it anymore and you have to make decisions and it has to be done. And that's what the mastering engineer is there to do. They're to, they're to improve the overall quality, like EQ, tonality, and loudness, volume, standard volume, of the mix uh, to be better than it was and to be competitive within the genre. Engineers know technical proficiency will only get them so far. A huge part of the job is working with people, a skill that Dan Kruglak has acquired in his time at Metal Arc. You're trying to take someone's song and vision and, and you kind of have to drive that. Once they play the song and you record it, um, you need to take it to the next point, which is where they want it to go. You just need to um, have great communication with somebody so you know you're not going to spend hours mixing something that may sound great but doesn't sound anything like they want their song to sound. And you have to be able to deal with people and want to deal with people and interact with people and be on top of it. And then you also have to have a very high level of technical skill in, in, in the field and be able to uh, do this all with grace of presence and poise of character at the same time. It could be said, a great recording is something we enjoy without considering the effort that went into it. In a way, the work of the engineer is meant to be invisible. And when that work is good, it can lead to something great. But that takes dedication and patience. Very nice. It's funny, I heard um, an interview with John Williams being interviewed by uh, Tavis Smiley from NPR. And Tavis asked him, like, well, what do you think about every time you get something new? You know, every time you're about to start a new project. And he said, I just want to make it better than the last one. And, and I laughed, and I was like, oh my God, John Williams says that. And that's what I say, like, all the time. Like, it just has to be better than the last thing I did. Like, that's the whole goal. It doesn't matter if the last thing I did was a corporate industrial or a film or a trailer or a reality show or it doesn't matter, like it just has to be better. Imagine sitting in a dark room, constantly trying to make something better. It's a fair question for any engineer. What drives them? Because it's all I want to do. It's I, I come in here seven days a week. I, and I, I'm here all the time. I love it here. I mean, I, I love my family, and I often miss my family, but I love being here. Monday morning is I, when I get to go back to work is a highlight, and I think everybody should have a gig 
that they do a job that they do for a living that is where they'd rather be than any other place in the world. I feel so lucky to be able to do what I love. Um, and I'm not really qualified to do anything else. Do you mind giving us a clap? No. Thank you, thank you. Dan, uh, I guess Daniel Krubach.